Hi everyone, I'm Grant K, and welcome to the ninth part on the video series of how to use Action, Autodesk Smoke's main 3D compositor. In the previous video, we animated the 3D camera in the composite, as well as added more visual impact by importing in a 3D model and animating it. So, so far it looks great. But as you always know, there's always room for more tweaking and refinement. Now we're going to do a bit more refinement to our 3D model's textures. However, before we start, I wanted to show you two things. Firstly, the composite in the right view shows everything, including all the wireframes of the objects. Now if the wireframes get in the way, or we don't want to see them anymore, just press Ctrl I on the keyboard to toggle the icons on and off. Secondly, if you press the Home button located to the right of the interface, this will frame the composition to 100%. You will see that the model looks quite jagged. This is because there is no anti-aliasing enabled. Going over to the left-hand side of the interface, switch to the Setup menu. Under the Rendering tab, you will find a title Anti-Aliasing. You have a choice of Anti-Aliasing in Software or Anti-Aliasing in Hardware. If you have a good enough graphics card on your system, you can choose Hardware Anti-Aliasing for a fast, high-quality result. I'm sure you notice the difference when I toggle the pop-up on and off. We'll click the Home button once again to go back to the previous Zoom settings. We will now focus on the materials of the 3D model. Be sure to turn Auto Key off unless you want to animate what we're about to change. You can see in the schematic view on the left that the 3D Geom objects have a material node for their settings, and some of them have diffuse maps which hold textures. We'll be tweaking both of them in this example. Firstly, we'll double-click on the material node for the big red button. In the object menu, we can see the material's defined color and its properties. We'd like to adjust the shininess of the button, so we'll adjust the shininess value to 20 points. Scrubbing the time bar, we can already see the difference. We'll do the same for the base of the button that is using the metallic texture. In the Action Schematic, select the Material node for the base geometry. Once again in the Object menu, we'll adjust the shininess to 25 points, and what a difference it makes! To finish the model off, it would also be great for the metallic bits of the model to have a slight bluish tint which matches the colors of the background. We can use the color corrector to do this. Holding down the Option hotkey on the keyboard and double-clicking on the diffuse object for the metallic material, you can see that this will bring up the media list and it also selects the associated media. In the media list, we select the grey box in the CC column and double-click it to enter into the color corrector. The first thing that we see is simply the texture. Now it makes more sense to see this texture in the context of the composite. So at the bottom left of the interface, click and hold down the pop-up button. In the list, we will change the mode from Result to context. Now that we can see the composition, we would like to tint the metallic material to the blue color of the background. Over to the right of the interface, you will see a front color pot. Clicking on the color pot will bring up the color picker. We can now sample the color behind the model by clicking and dragging it on the screen. I just want to point out that if you now look at the color wheel on the bottom left of the interface, this now shows a defined dot for the picked color. 
In this case, the highlights of the metal would benefit the most from the tint. So we'll switch the grading mode from Master to Highlights. We can grab the center point in the color wheel and drag it towards our picked color. Now our metal is starting to pick up the color we want. We'll exit the color corrector by pressing the return button to the left of the interface. So we've applied the color correction to the first metal texture, but it would also be great to add the color correction to the second metallic texture as well. We can simply achieve this by copying the color correction between one media to another in the media list. To do this, select the CC box from the first metallic texture. With the selection made, press the copy button located to the left of the media list. Holding down the option hotkey on the keyboard, click on the second metallic diffuse object in the schematic. This will reveal it in the media list. Select the empty box in the CC column and press the paste button located to the left of the media list. I think that our composite is pretty much finished. So with the composite completed, we now need to render it back out to the desktop. A few things I'd like to highlight about rendering. Firstly, we turned on hardware anti-aliasing, which smoothed the model. Now this setting will be part of the render. Secondly, we'd like to add a bit of motion blur to the composite to give it the appearance of a much smoother movement throughout the animation. Finally, we are going to render the clip using Clip History. Clip History allows us to trace everything inside the rendered clip wherever it may move to within the project. To set up the additional render settings, we will need to go into the Setup menu located at the left of the interface. Hardware anti-aliasing is already enabled for the render, but next to the setting is the motion blur settings. We'll enable the motion blur button to activate it. Now we'll scrub the time bar to a good point of movement. If we ever wish to preview what a frame would look like as a final render without always rendering the final clip, we can press the preview button. This button is located to the left of the interface under the process button. Pressing the preview will show you the final frame at this point in time. Now the motion blur looks quite mad here, so let's refine it a bit. We'll change the samples from 5 to 10. We'll also drop the camera shutter speed from 1 to 0 0.5. You'll see how the interface just went back to the regular view when we started making the changes. Pressing the preview button again, it will show a much better looking motion blur. One last thing before we render is always to save your work. Press the save button to the left of the interface and you can give your composite a name and save it within the file browser. I always say, in any software application, you can never have enough backups. And now I think it's time to render that final composite. We'll go back to frame 1. This is necessary because the process will start from whatever frame we are parked on before pressing the process button. So remember, always go back to frame 1. To process a regular clip, we would simply press the process button. However, to process a clip with history, click and hold down the drop down arrow on the process button and choose process and create history. This is a preference in the preferences menu you can change at any time. Action begins to do the render and the render speed is down to your system and the processes that you are using. For example, motion blur and anti-aliasing. Jumping forward in time, we now have a finished render. To review the render, press the player button located to the left of the interface and this will take us into the player module. 
we can switch the view into full screen mode by changing the source area layout from standard to full screen. We'll also change the play mode from play once to loop. Press play and there you have it. Coming up in our final video, we'll take the composite and begin to do composite versioning using clip history. This is the final part where we'll go ahead and start changing the composite, versioning it and adjusting it all within the context of the timeline and you don't have to go ahead and do it all over again on the desktop. This is a very powerful tool and it's something you will use over and over again. If you'd like to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. I hope you've been enjoying action and I'll see you again in the final video.